Do we have everyone here? Yeah, we have everyone. My bad. Um, now we're in the house. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Let's go. So. Walking. Walking. Bicycles. 
basic ocean. Actually, uh, CDA is the capital of riches in the world, which riches is like a small bicycle, uh, um, I can say, small, like a bicycle of taxi. And one of the questions is why CDP doesn't implement its uh, transportation system. And it's a lot has to do with the, the other benefits and the other like, things that go together with that. But yeah, what is DACA? Bangladesh, the capital of riches in the world, with over 400,000 of them. Uh, very environmentally friendly. They generate a lot of uh, jobs. Unfortunately, they are so not well regulated that most of them are, are illegal or working in an informal economy, which means that they have no insurance. And if they get in any kind of dispute with other cars, they are basically losing because they don't have any legal support for what they're doing. Obviously, not. Uh, insurance or not uh, fund for retirement or anything is a very hard job for the, for the driver. And on the other side we have South Korea who who has so advanced and sometimes I feel kind of angry, I don't know, there's a couple of Mexicans here so probably you can relate. Korea is so good that they keep improving. So one of the policies that they have, I don't know if someone mentioned before, but to promote uh, public transportation use in kids, they make a cartoon with a bus with this kind of uh, cute face called Tayo. But as cute as it looks, it still pollutes a little bit. I mean, they already have a lot of technology. They have some hybrid buses. They have some gas buses. I'm sure they're matching most of the international standards on, on emissions. But they still pollute more. And I guess uh, the key question that I, I think is interesting for this is, uh, so why, why one city developing one way, the other city developing the other way? Because both of them have the population, both of them have the challenge, both of them have the situation. And what I want to see is, what I want to, to think about it, is that both of them are smart in their own way. These kind of buses, if we take them to Dhaka, they wouldn't be able to work. Yeah. There's a lot of traffic and congestion, There's not, not, or the streets are not really organized. I don't know if anybody has been in Dhaka before, no. but basically there's no red lights. As I was really surprised when I, when I heard that, but it really, you go to an intersection and you start like getting slow as you see the other car coming and you just hope that someone would slow and you go first. It's a lot of uh, negotiation without talking. And you see that all the bosses have the corners like very scratched because of that negotiation. Negotiation and I guess the first the biggest task go first. When I visited there one time last year, <coughs> sorry, there was an elephant on the street. So yeah, our taxi stopped and the elephant went first. Uh, so there, there's a lot of context that, that would make a, a boss like Tayo basically impossible to work there. There's no infrastructure, there's no structure, there's no that. On the opposite side, Seoul is trying to promote more cycling, but there's also a lot of limitations. Like there's a lot of buses that doesn't want to, to wait for the bicycle. The infrastructure is not there yet, at least. Uh, there's also this perception that having a car has a higher uh, level. So a lot of people, they get like these really, really expensive bikes that you cannot really use in the street. It's more for, for fun, for recreation outside. So what I want to see is that, what I want to say is, both are smart in their own way, and both are solving the problem in their own way. Uh, both can be improved, but I personally think there's not that smart city. You can always get smarter, and, and getting smarter, it goes in different uh, dimensions, and we're gonna talk about that later. But this, but this situation of the bicycles here are because that's the way that they, they used to do, mm -hmm. or because they are really involved in this smart uh, concept. Because I was thinking about when people have the impulse to buy a car, mm -hmm. um, when the city grows, maybe this situation could be um, could change. Yeah. Or, or yeah. I mean, definitely, there's a lot of historical. Um, uh, conditions that lead to this situation. And I'm sure most of the people in Dhaka, they will drive a car if they could, uh, that they don't have the income to do it. But, in, in, for example, it's something that we see in Mexico and in many developed cities, now people are switching back from cars to biking. Exactly. And, and I mean, in, in Mexico City, it's like a hipster thing. Like, I have my nice bike and I, I always show off. And, and But other, not only that, like in more advanced cities in uh, Netherlands, biking is so, so common that people wouldn't use the cars in the city, probably, even though they have it, or, or they could, if they want. So, it's a little bit also the leapfrog. Uh, if, if we follow the same path, Dakar will try to get more cars, 
we get even more pollution, we get even more cows, more traffic, and eventually they'll probably go back to non-motorized transportation which makes it more safer, where, where, where people really can, can see the convenience of that. So when we think about how to develop a city, how to make it more smart, uh, if I had the decision of Dhaka, I would probably not go with a smart, um, uh, how can I say, control system for cars, but maybe how about with pedestrian? And, and make it more friendly for, for the environment from the beginning. And so what I want to, to emphasize and talk a little bit this is what are the difference, and I think this, this has been very obvious, between these two cities and between also Seoul and Makati. Uh, can someone help me like to say let, let's try to find like three or four differences between those cities? Come on, we mentioned most of them. For example, I will tell one. Uh, Japan is very plan oriented. They always have a plan in, in very structure. In older cities, they work more on, I don't know, like soft forces, like incentives or, or some rules that are there. Like Makati was talking about incentives all the time. In Bangladesh, uh, of course, they are, they, wait, they don't they work outside of the system, so there's some uh, incentives for them to do it. Well, in Seoul, you have like a very comprehensive plan, and we can tell in this year it was implemented. In, how it happened. So that's one important difference in the way they, they becoming smart. They, they're sort of solving their own problems. Who can tell me one other example? What makes them different? The, the GDP one gets into one is richer than the other one. Okay, the available resources, if we can put it a little more general. But yeah, that's a big difference and, and that we have to consider. Infrastructure of ICT. Okay, the, the level of technology that I already have, and the infrastructure that I already have. If we may expand a little bit that idea, the level of infrastructure, infrastructure in general. <clears throat> the age of the population. Demographics. Demographics. They are definitely different. The, the challenges that they are facing, sometimes they seem similar, but they are very different. If we talk about housing, housing in Japan and housing in a developing country that is still growing, the population is totally different. Uh, so yeah. The cultural background. Cultural background. Historical. What would you be is the key points on that cultural background? And, and because I agree they're different, but sometimes it's, it's very easy to say, oh, it's different cultures. So I think we have, if possible, we can we have to be more specific on what part of the culture uh, pushes in one direction or the other one. Do be educational? Education level of education, which could be part of the culture. Okay. I would say also the how can I say the the values that you have, like I feel Japan always wants everything more clear cut, more organized. And I think from my experience, Philippines are a little bit more similar to Latin people. We want we want to we want a rule and we want to be flexible around the rule. Okay. Now I don't know if it's gonna be more challenging or not. What was similar? What is similar in those cities? They are part of an important metropolitan. Mm -hmm. More or less similar population. Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess we can think a more or less similar population, more or less in scale, in some way. Any other similarities that you see between the four cities? What Beto was saying, the part of metropolitan areas, in the end, they have this complicated government structure where, where I mean, Philippines, I'm assuming it's the same, similar to Seoul, in which one big city is almost. Uh, I don't know, a big, big part of the population, economy, and income, and everything. Well, in Seoul, it's the same. Not Yokohama, but uh, it's still associated to Tokyo, and then Dhaka, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, well, Dhaka actually, they divided there. There were one city, they divided Dhaka North and Dhaka South, which yeah, creates this dynamic of, uh, you're basically living with a neighborhood, like, really close, 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 and you have to see how to deal with that. Okay, so we have two, two similarities, but there's plenty of more. I will put one. They have the same objectives as a city. I mean, all the cities are basically, uh, all the city governments are basically providing public services, and those are fairly common, like housing, transportation, uh, health, water, solid waste management, uh, you can name it, but they're sort of like the same everywhere. So I think uh, from the way of how to do policies, we have to, to understand they have the same goal in a very different situation. Can we find any other uh, similarities among them? Maybe one or two that we can point out? There's a political aim to achieve this smart city. 
Okay, yeah, definitely. There's there's political uh, goals too, definitely. And and I, I might even go a little bit further. In. There's political goals, and there's also like different stakeholders with different levels of power that have to be considered. In one sense, I mean, I was surprised that Yokohama was so close to the private sector, for example, which I'm guessing in some other countries, developing countries, you wouldn't trust them. Anything else? And they're also. Okay, definitely. And, and, and what we're going to see, and I think we, we, we all know that, but it's, it's, I want to eventually, a little later on, to conceptualize, to write it and put it concrete just to see it, is that the process they follow, they are not that different. In their decision making, uh, it's different situations, so they end up with different results, but I think at the end they have to consider similar factors. And within all that, you get to different solutions, obviously, as we can see, and as we saw in the policies, the, the challenges of the current policies that they are doing are different, definitely. Uh, so that leads us to, this, to, to what we were going to talk later, and, and my colleague here, he's is going to do that, but uh, exactly, and we have some views before, uh, what is the smart city, what are the different ways? And I just wanted to, I think this is a, uh, I don't know, I found that interesting reflection, like, is there any of these cities less smart? And we can discuss that about that. We can discuss about that. I mean, we're going to discuss about that the whole day today, the whole morning. But my initial impression is that you cannot really say, as long as they solve the problem they're facing, they're all being smart in their own way. So now I want to invite Hisu, my colleague, to talk a little bit more about that. So by using some technology. 
So in that point, we can um, see some ICT here, but the rest of these indicators are not really related to high technology. Yes. So uh, as you can see on the table, this is the top ten like smart city uh, according to Cities in Motion Index. So top one according like 2015, uh, New York City in the U.S. Uh, had a high performance on it. Especially AIDS, AIDS means like high performance, are considered to be those with an index greater than 90 point. And relatively high is R8, which is ranking A, Seoul, South Korea. So this is scored between 60 and 90. And the above things is average between 45 and 60. And like all smart cities, including those on the list, are on the like kind of journey towards being smarter. But well, not really, none of them have arrived yet. So, nextly, we can see uh, the top five Asia Pacific regional ranking. And so, uh, lead uh, top one in the index, and then Tokyo is the second. So mostly Tokyo is in the second place in the region, and it, it is followed Singapore, Hong Kong, and Osaka. So as we already talked about, like Asia Pacific regions are kind of similar in cultural and historical context, but um, on the other side, there are many differences still we have. So as we see, like cities in the motion index is a composite index. So this aims to evaluate different cities um, in relation to 10 dimensions considering key, the economy, human capital, social cohesion, public management, and etc. So these, among these dimensions, then how many are high technology? So I guess only two among these dimensions are related to that. Um, for example, technology, of course, regarding that, but international outreach, such as like internet connection, uh, it could be culture related to high technology. Excuse me? Yeah. Can I make a question? Uh -huh. uh, in the other hand, what were, what were the indicators analyzed? Were this one, like human capital, social uh -huh. cohesion? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of dimensions, like to, like, in order to access some, like, cities regarding, like, in order to see the, uh, like, City and city. So you mean the dimensions of the previous one? Yes. Oh, there was a list. So, this, this kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, this one ah. is based on this. Yeah, yeah this dimensions. <laughs> so we like score and yeah, according to like this. Kind These of were the indicators. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Not only regarding ICT. I mean, th this um, are important the a comprehensive um, development in the, the areas, or have more weight, for example, for one city be um, smarter in mobility, but the social cohesion is not uh, mm -hmm. very developed. Or, or what kind of weight can I say? Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. I know. It. Well, when I read about this. Um, they try to balance about among all these things, but we can share the, the document of the Cities in Motion Index to see the methodology. Yeah, it's like about like 80 pages. Yeah. And actually, I think like in order to see all like when we like evaluate the cities, we in cities there are so many different ways that we can see, right? 
So I think that's why, according to that, they need maybe like human capital and economy, like some like important factors that you mentioned, they choose and select it. And, and among this dimension, there are more indicators inside that. So according to that, we you know, like quantify some like city indexes. So yeah, only, yeah. So that's why these are city ranking. So like after seeing like this kind of like indexes and many like comparing cities, I think the smart city can is like not everyone can have the latest technology, right? So that's why latest technology is not always the best option. So I think smart city can be diverse than we like might thought. So like I can give some conclusions regarding this idea. So there is no single model of success to make a good city and um, so it should be like diverse and it is not enough to be good to see the city in one dimension so we need to see you know like diverse dimensions as I already mentioned and we need to break out the silos like division so we can like break some like overcome local challenges and by as like there's no perfect city exists, so I can we can cooperate each other, so it can bring some synergies. And many cities are slow, really change, but like Seoul is really like trying to change really fast, but mostly it's not really common though. So I think that's why many cities have to have some identity regarding that. So the use of like this index as a planning tool can be the continuous improvement for like city development, I guess. And cities do not always have the reputation they deserve. And like so I think we should consider the context of cities to when we think about smart city. So that's why I prepare some like uh, I tried to introduce some book, uh, The Ungovernable City, written by Douglas Yates. And, like, Douglas Yates at Indie Book, um, is there are interesting fragmentation of political institutions and citizen demands in cities. Yates said that big city leaders should be like decision makers and faced with. Um, if you have a, like task of making an ungovernable city to governable. So I think it's really difficult sometimes. So it implies that the mayors of the large cities must adopt various leadership styles and political strategies within the limited financial and political spectrum. So these are kind of main points to classify the leadership styles of city mayors and how they might change their like activism and innovation. So um, as you can see in this figure, mayors differ along two central dimensions. First one is the amount of political and financial resources that mayors possess in dealing with their various problems, especially in urban areas. And second one is the degree of activism and innovation they, they display in their daily work, in every day. So the two dimensions permit the identification of four ideal types that correspond clo closely to mayor styles in, in the especially largest cities. So as you can see, one style is the mayor who like possess weak political and financial resources but who is exhibits a strong desire to solve some urban problems. We usually call crusader style. Um, crusader style of 
mayors usually emphasize a symbolic politics and crisis management. So, because he does, he or she does not have the resources to govern or control the city, like through the force of financial somebody. So that's why mayors try to like emphasize some issues and develop support um, through their his like personality. And the second style can be entrepreneur. Um, this kind of mayors can have possess strong political and financial resources and also at the same time takes a strong activist posture toward urban policy making. So entrepreneur uses his available political and financial resources to provide large scale of public projects. Yeah, and other new public services to build and consolidate some political support. And the third one, it can be like broker. So um, in this case, many mayors who possess relatively weak political or fiscal resources, and at the same time, he assumes a kind of, kind of passive role in serving some urban problems. And the last one can be the both type. So um, both kind of the mayor who possesses strong political fiscal resources but who assume a passive attitude toward urban problem solving. So we can call both. So usually in the like Yates, he mentioned that the both style of mayors he use his power to maintain his political control. So um, the political strategies adopted by these four leadership styles are as dem like demonstrated by their characteristic behavior. So um, actually, uh, when I see and look through these different types of leadership style, I thought entrepreneur style leadership can be really um, easy to conduct some or produce new project regarding ICT or to make some smart city. But I think it really depends on like city like environment and city mayors and leadership as well. So I guess we can like discuss about it. So yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kishu. And so we have like uh, two things to consider that we are seeing here. The first is, and we've been talking about that a lot, all the different dimensions that can be the context and the possible solution. And we have also the capacities that we can do, the leadership. How much can we take advantage or not of the situation, of the challenges, or the opportunities? So thinking, and I'm just going to, I think it's Good to go back to that, sorry. How is your mayor? Or, I mean, I know this theory was a lot for mayors, but I think this also applies sometimes to bosses. Uh, if we measure on the level of the overweight, the, the resources they have to influence their, their area in their activism or innovation, who has a, a mayor or a direct boss that is entrepreneur in your city? No? Okay, who has a boss? Like the boss typical. Okay, like strong power, they can do the things, but hey, maybe they don't really want to take that extra mile to create something new, to come up with new ideas, to take some risk, perhaps. Only one? In, 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 my, in, in the metropolitan area, there are some of the mayors of different municipalities. Mm -hmm. One of them is entrepreneur, one of, or two of them. Okay, that's good. But that's different because it's nine municipalities in the same. Region. Okay, I'm also from Guadalajara, so yeah. Yeah. And, okay, so that's true. And that's also, that makes it even more complex because in the metropolitan areas, yeah, one person can be pushing a lot and the other one might be like slowing down. So we have a couple of entrepreneurs there. We have boss, one or two. How about Crusader? 
someone who really wants to do things but doesn't really have the resources to do it or the power to do it. Okay, we have one. And brokers, so the rest are brokers. In all your cities, are people who, eh, they don't really want to do much and they don't really have the resources to do much, so they're like a little bit more passive and maybe mm -hmm. try to keep everything floating without going too far away and going too back, falling too behind. Maybe in Madrid we are in the crochet. We are in the crochet that time. Okay, yeah, and I like that you mentioned time because it changed a lot. And, and I actually personally think that the same way in a metropolitan area you can have like one major kind of super entrepreneur and another one like super broker, it's also within the government that maybe one department is more entrepreneur and one person a little bit lagging behind. So it's, I don't think it's a really clear cut between them, they're a little bit like ideals. But the reason why I wanted to, to come back to this and, and think a little bit more is because now I want people to divide between these four roles for the next activity. So we can do this in, in two ways. Uh, now let's do it in one way. I'll, I'll be more bossy and I will pick. So let's say this is one, two, three, four. And to make sure we have like the same of everyone, you're going to take the role one, two, three. Can you just say your... your, your your quality, your quality, so you're an entrepreneur. You are? Oh, entrepreneur. No, let's go with your Saturn. That's being an entrepreneur, like, I'm going to be whoever I want. Okay, you can be an entrepreneur acting as a crusader today. <laughs> you are a Entrepreneur. Um, Which one is your role? <laughs> he was a trainer, she was boss, so your turn is Cru <laughs> <laughs> Crusader. Max? I don't want to be the broker, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's a good broker attitude. I don't want to be part of this. Very well done. You started ahead. So he's taking the leadership. That's a good way. I don't really want to be a broker. Okay, that, that, I, don't, I don't want to do a broker, but I cannot influence it because I have no power. So, okay, the perfect broker. <laughs> and now, uh, Maria? You can be entrepreneur to keep with the one 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 it, we're going to have a, a small dynamic like activity, like very interactive, so I want people to take different roles just to see where we go from that. It's a team stuff, so you can be a team. Vamos a jugar un poco. Vamos a jugar un poco. Vamos a hacer en español, ahora es entrepreneur. Yeah. Vas a. Soy yo. Soy yo, vos. Y en el sol. Maybe you should have this, like, leave it open. No. And Crusader. What do I have to be Crusader? <laughs> <laughs> He's a baby joint, so we have them the same broker. Yeah. Okay, very good. So now, everybody remember yours? Who, who's the entrepreneur? Team. Raise your hand. One, two, three. Maria, Maria, Maria. Okay, we have three. <laughs> Who is the boss? Who's broker? Okay, and who's Crusader? That's good, that's good. Everybody's still awake. <laughs> So, this is how we're going to work. We've been talking and we've been seeing how so many different smart, smart policies, so many different ways to be smart. But how do we end up on that? And, and this small exercise, what I, I think is going to show is how, from the same base, depending on how we face the challenge, we end up in different, different, different directions. And, and this is going to go, this is going to give us like some insights for the next part, we're going to start looking at the process to make the policy and where in that process there are the difference and the similarities. So, uh, how different smart ways were born? So, local policies are always adapted to local solutions, that's something, local challenges, sorry, and so they depend on the context. So, we're going to do a small activity with this. Who can help me reading the, the yellow part? Any volunteers? Should I just pick? 
Who hasn't talked too much yet? <coughs> Let's see, I think I haven't heard that much. Umul. Yeah, okay. Could you please? So, I mean, as head of the wider to the mayor, you are faced with the following citizens of a 5,000 people neighborhood in the limit between your city and the next one are protesting because of lack of public transportation, safety, and green spaces in their neighborhood. A general degradation of the street and other public spaces also evident in this low income area. Okay, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. And so, any questions about it? There is basically a neighborhood in a city that is not very well served, basically, and it's been degraded, that's logical. And it's at the limit between two cities in the metropolitan area. I think that's very common in high time. We can see that in almost everywhere in the metropolitan area. Who can help us reading the second paragraph? A different volunteer? No, okay. It's clear the lack of clear boundaries between the two cities is the root because the decision public services. But so we don't limit dispute would take too long and serious and from service should be addressed quickly. Okay, who can relate to this kind of situation? I mean, I know very well in my native metropolitan Guadalajara, between Tonela and Tlaquepaque, there's, you have like this kind of poor part of the city, a poor municipality in a metropolitan area, and the other a little bit richer. And literally, there's one street, I mean, there. On one side, you have pavement, it's okay. On the other side, it's just rocks. And, and, and so if you go in one direction, it's pretty nice. If you go in the other one, you cannot really drive there because it's all dirty and gross. Uh, so here we have one solution that I think is, is not that uh, far away from what we can find in, in any metropolitan area. There's a root problem that is really hard to choose because when you're in the limit, there's a lot of political issues. There's a lot of like who should provide the services or who's going to collect the taxes. And sometimes it's not so clear. Uh, but people living there, they basically don't care. I want to have water in my house. I want to have uh, people picking up my garbage. I want to have public transportation here. I want someone to solve this, this problem in the street. And if you don't solve it, I'm going to go to the media and everybody's going to get in trouble. So in this situation, first, we're going to divide the four class of leadership styles. We already did that. Uh, and for, I know some people might disagree with their own uh, uh, style, but let's just pretend. It's like a game, like acting. And now what we're going to do, and I want to do it very quickly, very dynamic, so I hope whoever is sleeping wake up quickly, is a brainstorming about what we can do. Uh, and basically, how can we solve this problem? This is going to be very international because we have people here from what, three continents at least. And so it's going to be very interesting to see different perspectives. And also we have four styles of leadership. So I hope to hear different views on that. So what would you do in this situation? What would you recommend to your mayor as the head advisor? It's going to be our open table for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just raise your hand and to say it. Yeah, as an entrepreneur, you know, I would create a new neighborhood move the people outside of the city limits inside. <laughs> okay, you say, you know what, this part is not working, let's move you to another place. That's one option. And it's, a, it's a great service, so any idea is will, it's good. Later we're going to define it, maybe some of them a little bit more, but for now, just come up with whatever. Uh, well, given that um, the problem is really, really, really kind of from both cities and not only from us, so let's just kind of wait and see what the other cities are thinking about. Yeah, not, not our problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, we can send some people there on this side of the city, just kind of talk to them a little bit, but let's just kind of wait and see what the other city is doing. I mean, That's I also another solution, like why should I deal with that? They just say, okay, you know, I'm, I would like to help you, but you should talk with the other person. No, but just in the case, so... To, to what, to which jurisdiction are they attached? Who are they voting for? It's not clear. Okay. And, and I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe in some countries it's impossible to think that there's a not clear division, but in Guadalajara, in Guadalajara metropolitan area, there's this area which is at like two or three blocks at least, that there's not really clear. So some people pay service to one side, some people pay to the other one. 
Sometimes you're paying water from one side and, and so it waste collection to the other one. So there's really a little bit like nobody really knows. I think that I have not the experience and the background to participate in this, but I could not be afraid about media. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the exposition of the situation gets more involved politicians and citizens. Okay. Uh, comes with ideas of, of, of um, some kind of involving them. Okay, just come with the media, let's try to discuss everything yeah. together. And that's also very funny. Like, I remember there's some people from the private sector, you're from NGO. And so I think most of the people are from the government, but if you're not from the government, you can also think what would you expect or hope for your government to do with this situation. Okay, so bring the media, that's one option. Another option, just move the people. Another option, just push them to the other side. Any other? Uh, I think it's better to just make it clear that we're the boundaries of each and they can take care of their own territory. Or oh, if the other city is smaller or like more like subsidy, we just make it greater city or greater Istanbul or something. Like just okay, there's two positions. If we're more at the same level, let's make the boundary. Uh -huh. If one is bigger than the other one, basically take over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that, that that can also work. Yeah, well, in the long term, the solution is you ask the greater authority what the boundary will be. But for a short-term solution, you have to negotiate with the others, the municipality or the local government. You can, for example, in your own capacity, build a part on your side, so people can come over to that side, it's no problem. But for public transport and safety, you have to negotiate with the others. No, but it's too big of a problem. I mean, if it's going to take too long to divide the boundaries. Uh, I mean, the political term is going to be over in a few years, so just um, it's better not to have a big problem and just leave it like that, and somebody else can take care of it. I mean, it's bad press. Whatever we do is going to be bad press, so we don't want any bad press for our, for our mayor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 This is easy. To my ears of the of the two cities. Mm -hmm. And maybe even involving the the managers of the public transport system. Uh, if these areas have a different uh, police service or something, because maybe the 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 thing that, that can be studied uh, better and maybe set up um, um, earlier is the problem of transport and safety, maybe, or at least uh, starting to take in some measures about that. And maybe building green spaces is, very, is more difficult because you have to uh, plan it maybe with a urban plan, a common urban plan or something. And of course, as a crusader, considering the opinion of the citizen, uh, making surveys or making any kind of any other participatory uh, thing. Um, okay, so it's very interesting that most of the solutions that I heard from, uh, I think, I'm not sure if all of them, most of the leadership style at least, the mayor will say, you know what, but I need a solution now. I mean, people are angry at this moment. If we're going to start negotiating, but what can we do this next week? So that they don't they don't go to the press and they don't make my party group look bad and they don't I don't have like a protest in front of my door next week or two weeks. So what what steps we can do next week? I think we can go promise that we're gonna work on it and just <laughs> Okay, we go to the place with some speakers and <clears throat> no problem is gonna be solved, just wait a little bit, we're gonna do it. That's and also they start thinking of and Let's start thinking also about the, the, the resources that it would be and which stakeholders we have to bring for that. So we're going to go there, maybe we, we can talk with the, I don't know, neighborhood manager or some, some cities have like a neighborhood councils. So that's a good way to go with the local leaders there to try to get their support. Let, let's, what can we do to solve it? Is there any, any, any quick fix we can do? Let's just go and talk and promise. Uh, 
pilots' companies, you know, and you can hear by the pilot companies or the symbol stores or the same companies with dates, and then it's just decided later. <laughs> you can just uh, pay the tax, instead of the tax, you can pay the pilots' companies. Okay, like, like kind of bring some companies to solve some of the problems that, that's like a quick fix, they're going to be efficient. Mm -hmm. that could be Okay, what kind of stakeholders would we need for that? And like people who work in the city, I guess. You mentioned councils, the, the city council. Um, obviously, the private sector, like they have to be a company that can do that. So we have like at least two, two or three actors that we have to convince and bring together. Okay, cities have to agree. That's good. Any other solutions that we can make? I I would look for different examples around the world that they have with the same issue and look for similarities maybe and try to, try to adapt solutions and try to uh, bring them for for the people in church. Okay, so you both would agree on, okay, I know this is urgent, but I'm going to go to search for a couple of days and come back. We, we, okay, but so. In Colombia, I don't know if in other countries it's like that, but in Colombia, it's um, the, the police, it's a national institution, so I would just call the police and let them handle the, the problem. I mean, but it depends how bad it is to settle. I mean, if it's okay, you can wait, you know, but. For example, in France, we had this, uh, in north of France, this uh, Calais, you know, thing, which is totally illegal, it belongs to no one, no one wants it, and basically, they, I mean, they send the army, you know. Okay, <laughs> this is it's not to burn it up, you know, but it's yeah. just so to, to make sure to force people to go into mm -hmm. special camps with, like, prefab houses and stuff, so they put them here, you know, no consultation, no choice. Okay, okay. They did that in one neighborhood in Hong Kong as well, which was totally, you know, like a block which you couldn't enter. You know? And you know, the good thing about those kind of solutions, you do that once, the press go there, and nobody else dribbles. Nobody else complains for a while. We wouldn't do that as brokers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I it's mean, a national institution. You just call, and then it's somebody and, else's problem. So. And, 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 I, I mean, I, I'm a little surprised where are the entrepreneurs here, because uh, we had a lot of ways of solu solutions to postpone the problem, but I haven't seen any really solving anything. So there's no, where, where are the, the entrepreneurs or the crusaders? Before we mention the political aspect, if I as a mayor go and I say, you know what, I'm going to fix this half of the neighborhood because this is what I think is our area, mm -hmm. and you actually publicize, you make your, your side of the city to look better than the other one. And that's also something, I mean, depending if it's the same party or different party, but in some cases that is useful. Like, you, it's not only about solving the problems, it's about using the policy to look well or to make the other one look bad or something like that. Okay, so we have some ideas. Let's try to pick like two or three to follow the exercise. Um, I think something that was very common is to try to go there and talk with the people. So we can think that that would be like something that I saw several people say. We go there, we talk, and then depending on the answer, sometimes we do promises, sometimes we actually set up a task force. I think how about we go with that idea as a group and we, we're going to develop a little bit more. Because now, what I want to do, and, and this is a little bit more of, I, I think it's a little more like a real world uh, a, a example. The mayor says, okay, I like what you say, in general, let's go there, let's talk, let's find specifically what problems they have, and let's see if we just promise something and we actually come up with a solution, maybe half and half, 
Uh, however, and I think this happens everywhere, we don't have that much money. So, uh, how can we do this? Well, like here I say roughly half of the resources, but how can we do this in a cheap and effective way? Survey everyone, we train a few of them, you know, okay, you have to do it, come up with the results and we follow up together. Any other like how, how can we do this thing that we were talking about? Basically knowing the, the specific problems and try to come up with a plan, I guess, to solve it, a little bit cheaper. Try to involve the private sector or some companies, not necessarily locally, but in the the city, the even as a sponsor or something like that? Yeah, and actually, I mean, it, it does make sense. Like, maybe there's a couple of stores there, and you can say, you know what, we want to make this public hearing, people are going to need to buy some water because it's going to be very sunny. How about you sponsor this with some posters, and we do it outside of your store so you, you can get some clients. Okay, I think those two are very, very creative ways to, to work together with, with those. Uh, we don't want people to lower the, the amount of resources that the government has to put in. And the mayor says, okay, let's do it. I like your idea, we're going to go for that. Uh, after sharing the plans with the, living, with the people living in the neighborhood, this is what we come up with. They agreed to wait for three months, and you have basically three months to make some clear progress. That the, the people in the community, they want to see that you're actually doing something and you're not just empty promises, or they go with the media again. And, I mean, it, it, this is really depends on how the country works and, and how the position in the political spectrum, but they just say that you don't want them to, to have bad press, because that's going to be troublesome for you, I don't know, for your political career in the future, or for anything. So, but after a month, you start doing it, you go with the surveys, you do it, and after a month, uh, someone in the team doesn't like it. Someone in the team seems to be against of that. So let's let's go a little bit step behind in which partners do we need to do it. So let's say we do the consultation. You you probably have an office of public um, like uh, outside communications in your in your building, right? In your in your government. So you're working with them to organize everything. And to lower the cost, we're working with let's say one convenience store and the in the community association the neighborhood committee that are helping you, and who, who should we pretend that doesn't want to work with us? How about um, maybe the, the, the neighborhood association, the leader of the neighborhood association, for any personal reasons, doesn't want to do it. Like you ask him to bring the people, then doesn't bring all the people, you ask him to, to tell you who you can work with, but they only talk about their friends, not really the people who needs to be there. How can we go around that? Any ideas? You have two months to be able to prove to the community, to the neighborhood, that you're doing something. And after one month of working with this uh, social uh, neighborhood association, they're really not helping you. You notice that maybe they have some fights between them or whatever, and they're really not supporting you. What changes can you do? You can do a survey to know if his or her opinion is the uh, opinion of the majority or something. Okay. I would just ask for maybe Koika or Janika help write the China or just so. Okay, that's right. Actually, that, I, I was surprised nobody mentioned before that, but go to a non-profit that can be an a independent body, for example, to make the survey and try to get the, the information. Any other ideas? Trust a lot in negotiation, but basically, I think it's good, and I think that would 
all their ideas were very useful, and that's what any, any city should do, like go out, come with them, try to get some project together. But there's also a lot of these challenges that are true, that, that governments want to do something, but they face either lack of resources, either not all the stakeholders are, are on board. And what I wanted to, to, to try to get with this process is that the idea we got at the end, and the idea that we come from the beginning, sometimes they change a lot. At the beginning, we say, okay, you know what? This is too complicated, there's a border issue that it takes so long time to solve. How about we just move the people to another place? We redevelop this new area, they can move here, so we don't have to worry about the border. That was actually a good idea, but it would take several years to, to actually develop it, probably today. Solve the, the actual core problem of the limits would be another option, but that also, even though it's ideal, it would take a long time. So, what I want to mention from this, and we're gonna follow up on that, is that Sometimes the ideal solution, it, you cannot, it's not feasible, and then you have to adapt. And I think that's where it's things you have to be smart on, on where to go from that. And that's a little bit how, how I think that's why so many uh, cities have like different kind of policies for the same thing, because they, they were adopted to these kind of local situations. One example that I think is a little bit funny related to that it's, uh, well, conclusion, it's more related to technology, but it doesn't have to be. In this case, it was a little bit uh, tangential. But it's about finding the space solution, and I like really this, this case of example. Uh, when NASA started sending astronauts to space, you know, in the 60s, they, there were people starting to go to the, to the space, they discovered that the pens also work on the, on the space because you need gravity for them to work. So they spend, and this actually later someone told me that this is not a real story, that it's kind of a myth, but let's just think about it. They spend 12 billion dollars developing a pen. And actually you can buy this kind of pen. They, they really exist, you can buy them if you go to NASA in Houston. They cost them like 15 dollars or whatever. And this pen, they can write upside down. I don't know if you try to write upside down with your pen, but it doesn't work after a, <laughs> 20 seconds, it just stops working. They can, uh, Right in any surface, like even glass, temperatures, a wide range of temperature. And Russian people just use a pencil. So this is, uh, we have to find the answer that, that goes to the, to the situation. And technology is one way you're going, but it's not the only one. So, do we want to take a break? I see like three people out of ten going around. and We can take like two minutes to rest. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let's have some food for thought. A little bit while we wait for the people to meet us because it's like 20% of the people. Uh, we've been talking so much about how policies have to adapt to the context. How it's not just about technology, it's really about finding a solution. So now, let's think a little bit for one or two minutes. If Policies are so context dependent. How can we import one policy from the other one? I mean, you all have been learning from what Seoul is doing, and maybe some of those things like, oh, wow, that's amazing! I wish my city has that. Uh, but can we really do that, or how can we do that? If if that works, and it's a little bit what we talked before. Why Seoul doesn't take the rickshaws to lower their emissions? Or why DACA doesn't start like making happy faces in their in their buses to see if there's like better uh, traffic management. So let's think about, about that. I'm gonna get a juice and I'll ask you. Everybody we've been 
have been here about, about a week. Mm -hmm. oh. And in about a week, I mean, you do the same thing you do at home, like you have to eat, you have to move from one place to the other ones, you get to see I don't know, police around, or I don't know, maybe use water. So, what feels a little bit different, and why does it feel different? I think that's important to see if one policy will work in my city. And we'll see there's a difference. And same as you have lived in a different city, like I don't know how many here have lived abroad for maybe more than a couple of weeks. And were the things different? And in how way and how do you approach that? And can we adapt to that? So let's think a little bit about that. And when everybody comes back, we we'll discuss it together. Here they're very expensive because they don't have the weather or the space. And about the people, that's true. 
Latin people were very open, so maybe even if you don't speak the language, you make an effort. In Asians in general, not only Koreans, they tend to be a little more shy. So sometimes if they don't feel they can speak, they try to avoid it. And it doesn't mean they're not nice, it's just different yeah. cultures. Yes, it's okay, so thinking about this uh, very deep difference that they have, is it really possible to export our core policies? And what, what do you think? Right, it, 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 it has to be possible, but it's just that it's not a uh, copy paste in the sense that a lot of nice ICT improvements that have happened in Seoul that we've seen in class are applicable and dependent. Uh, like a large portion of their success is based on the way Korean people are. I mean, like for example, the 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 the, the uh, distance fare for the subway system, they're, they're counting on Koreans actually like tapping out and letting the government know like listen I came out in this station so you should charge me more and stuff like that. It's not about honesty or it's just about um, seeing, I don't know, some historic behavior in which Korean culture and Seoul culture is, is it's like a self-conscious citizen, it's like a trust in the government, trust the institution. For example, Latin America is the other way around. I, I don't want to say that, that Latin American people want to cheat, but actually they would want to not try to pay the government just because they don't trust the government. So, yeah. um, so a lot of the innovations are based on, on this uh, uh, conscious citizen that, that, that makes Seoul and Koreans, I mean, it's so, not that it's impossible in their city, it's just that it has to be changed, the, the whole incest, incentive system. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's possible or not possible to...? It, it is possible, but not not uh, copy-paste, it's like a translation of a... <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, it's a translation. Definitely. Maybe the same objective, maybe the same type of project, maybe some part of the implementation phase, but in the end, it, it has to be a different, um, like more culture uh, targeted um, policy. Okay, how about Bahrain? Do you think there were some policies from Seoul that we can like, you can interesting? Yeah, them? definitely. You can uh, with all the policies, fine. But the thing is, to be sexist, this is another story. You can bring ah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what do you think would be important to keep in mind to try to be successful? Uh, uh, I think the lifestyle is a bit different from farming. Yeah. That this is the dip from the culture as well. Okay. So this need to a long term of education and awareness. Okay. That, that's actually it's quite a funny that <coughs> both of you come up with the same idea that okay you can bring the policy but you need to change the people to adapt to follow that policy a little bit different ways I guess but we we'll change the policy to we'll change the policy and adapt it to the culture. That's why I would think it's, it's easier Probably. than changing the whole culture to, to match the policy, to try to change the policy a little bit. And, but the, the thing, the reason why I think it was funny is because sometimes that happens. Sometimes they bring some policy from outside and you're like, this doesn't really fit, but they just hope that people will get used to it. And, and I think in, I've seen in some countries that they do that, but they waste a lot of resources then try to fix it or make it fit the bad. So, yeah. And maybe the comparison would be in other times. So, if, for, for example, my country is in a stage that Seoul was several years ago, could be okay what they did in that time for improve that. Okay. So, it could be like that. And different policies for different issues. Some of them are like dreams, some of them not, but some of them are so concrete that could be possible. That's true, that's true. It's also, it's about space. Time and space is basically picking the right policy. Maybe we are not ready to have, I don't know, like this policy yet, but we can have the previous one or, or part of it. Okay, so very related to what uh, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to tropicalize it with basically understand the similarities and the difference. What, what part is different, what part is similar in the culture, in the context, in the resources, target population and see if it's enough or not, or try to adapt to parts that are different. And uh, I think for this, it's very important, and it's also a challenge. Sometimes, uh, 
I mean, in Sydney we do a lot of workshops and, and major visits, and we have, and I often hear from the major, oh, that's really good. I should, I should try to see a way to put it in my, in my, in my city. It would be really nice to have this technology or that policy or this thing. Uh, but we have to have a clear idea of what's the problem and how the solution will work in my context. Like sometimes, uh, we, sometimes I think it's very common when you talk with government officials, they show you the results and also the successful results, but you, they don't talk that much about the process of how they got there and what failures they have on the way, which are going to be very useful for, you, for any city to predict. So tropicalize it. And uh, I personally think that uh, every city also has their creativity. I mean, it was mentioned before that some of the cities don't get enough recognition. I, I definitely think that some cities that they feel they're behind, they're actually advanced in some sense. So I personally think uh, Use the local creativity to the local intelligence. So you can see to other like, other policies to get an idea, and, but inspired by them, kind of create your own thing, just to, to take advantage of that local experience. Uh, but when doing that, and I think I mentioned this at the beginning, I've been repeating it so much that I'm gonna keep repeating it for a while. <laughs> we have, I think, we have to follow not only the results of the policy, not only in what you see, but the process. How did they manage to get there? And many, maybe repeating the same process exactly in my city will give a different solution. And the second that is, what was the criteria to make those decisions? Like, okay, maybe at some point in the history, in the back, so there was not ICT developed, and they choose, okay, we're gonna invest in, in research, or we're gonna invest in education to go this way, why they choose that? And does that apply to my city or not? Maybe in their case, they don't have natural resources, so they decided to go to education. But if my country has a lot of natural resources, maybe it's not so cost effective. Maybe I can follow another path, it would be better for my city. Uh, and consider not only the actions, but the context and the background. And I think we talked a lot about that already. That definitely we have to see around that. So, many things are different, but, and I mentioned at some point, I think the essence is the same. Like cities all over the world has very similar objectives, very similar goals. Uh, so I also agree, really, I think we can uh, import export policies, uh, at least ideas that we can then convert to local policies. So, I was planning to have a break, but I think we already have like a couple of smart breaks, so is it okay if we skip this one? Or anybody really very tired? And now, uh, okay, basically what we have left is this is also an activity, how to develop a smart policy and the final reflection and discussion. So I think we're going well, well on time. Uh, but this, you know, I, I'm not a government official and I don't have that many years like working with government officials as any of these persons. But, uh, and I also I haven't traveled to many of the countries that you've been, like of course Mexico I probably know a little bit more, but I've never been in Spain and never been in Bahrain. Uh, Colombia, I read a little bit, but not really that much. Mongolia, same. Uh, so, in this session, we've been seeing at the different uh, policies and we've been seeing a very different idea that we're discussing from different perspectives. What I want to, to try to see now is not focus on the difference, but now in the similarities. What was the same for that? What, what, what happened uh, similar way in all those cities? So, 